just make sure you are constantly a learner of the game. Yeah, that's and, good. and I think that's the thing is I'm constantly learning no matter what. All right, so first of all, welcome to Embrace the Process podcast. So today I have a special guest with me. Uh, so I know you guys are going to love this episode. Uh, this is Paul, who is my main man out in Hawaii. So Paul has actually started Phase 1 Hawaii years ago, which we'll talk about, and has literally built the Phase 1 brand right there on the island. So we'll get into some details. We'll have a little bit of fun. But uh, what's going on, man? How you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. It's glad. I'm just glad to be out here again, and it's been a minute. Yeah. And it's just, you know, good to be at home, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So you were, so this is your original home? Yes. All right. So how long ago or what made you leave Las Vegas? Well, you know, I, I was, I'm originally from Hawaii, but I came out here to play football. Okay. I lived out here for nine years. Yeah. And then again, you know, we, we met in that process in a nutshell. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was just time. It was just yeah. time, different changes in my life from the, mm -hmm. the life I was living in Vegas, you know, being in the, the industry of the hotels, the nightclubs mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I uh, just decided to go back home. Yeah, 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 no doubt, no doubt. So I remember, so we met at, like what it was like a super bowl party or a something super like that right? bowl. so it was it was a friend of a friend mm -hmm. uh, yep. all hawaii link yep mm -hmm. and uh i believe his son was nine at the time is he that young Some, something oh, wow. like that wow and he said uh let me introduce you to my son's trainer yeah you're like trainer. <laughs> there's trainer so nine years old, <laughs> yeah, nine years old. why do you have a trainer <laughs> exactly so uh you know that's how how we met yeah and um yeah that's where we're, we're at today so, so I think what was cool, which I think uh, I definitely want people to, to know, because I thought it was super cool. So when you left Vegas and went to Hawaii, you would like send me like, I think it was emails maybe. I think it was an email, but it would be like every year. Yeah, once a year. It was like once a year. It was mm -hmm. like every January I would get mm -hmm. an email that's like, I want to bring phase one to Hawaii. Yeah. You know, I'm almost ready. And it would just be, you know, and I would always reply like, yeah, cool, man. Just let me know when you're ready. Yeah. So- what was it about phase one and what we do and how we help athletes? Like, what made you want to do that in Hawaii? Like, what mm -hmm. made you realize, like, man, this would be dope. We need to bring it out to the island. Yeah. So, you know, when I met you initially, mm -hmm. you know, again, it was like, what? Why do you need a trainer yeah. for, for a kid? I didn't understand that yeah. at first. But when I moved back home, and this was in 2006, mm -hmm. were you in your new facility or that? Uh, the 2006, one yeah, we were on, no, we were still on Spring Still Mountain. on Spring Mountain. Yeah, so yeah, at yeah. that time, you know, I didn't really get it, but then I started following mm -hmm. you, um, you know, through social media mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I'm actually an entrepreneur by heart. Yeah. So, I mean, not necessarily in the fitness industry, but just in general. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was always looking for something new to do. Yeah. And in Hawaii, it's just very hard. Yeah. You know, you got to pick your, your poison because you invest in the wrong thing and you, you lose money. Yeah. So years went by. Yep. Every year I said, Mike, I think I'm ready. Literally. And Mike said, I'm ready. Every year. <laughs> every year. Every and then I'm like, year. wait, 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 I'm not ready. <laughs> and right, then, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, year, another year. I think it took literally about three or four years yeah. till I finally said, wow. Mike, no, now I'm ready. And the reason is, is because I took my younger side, I have two boys, one who's 21 now, one's 13. Okay. My 13 year old was about five years old at the time. Mm -hmm. And we took him to this one, what they called... I don't even want to say the name of it, but it, it was a training for mm -hmm. kids okay. and they had about 10 circuits. I paid 20 bucks for mm -hmm. it and it was a day of just moving in circuits. And yeah. I looked at it and not to put anybody down, but I wasn't just impressed. Yeah. So yeah, at yeah. that point, I said, you know what? This is where we need to bring it. Yeah, phase one to Hawaii. It. And just following you along the time, then, you know, you're in your gym. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that's a dope yeah, gym. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, but how do we do it in Hawaii? Wow. No, that's right? awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so. I guess one of the first things, man, that, that stands out to me is that, you know, the persistence. So, like, in between those emails, you know, I mean, per year, mm -hmm. what were some things that were you looking at? Were you looking at, like, the market or, like, the athletes or, like, the amount of scholarships? Like, you know what I mean? Like, because, mm -hmm. I mean, it was, like, literally pretty consistent right. every year for three or four years. Right. But what was that thought process during that time? Well, again, I, w I was kind of in and out of different businesses mm -hmm. um, during that time. And but sports is is me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I grew up yeah, playing yeah. sports. I was a coach at one point. I was actually a you know a trainer at Twenty Four Fitness when I moved mm -hmm. here. Um, so I was already kind of in the industry, yeah. but not in. Yeah. So 
you know, I think that was the thing. I just knew Hawaii needed more. So every time I would hit you up, something would resonate where I'm like, okay, now I think it's time yeah. because yeah. I saw something on the news where, you know, athletes not getting enough looks or, mm -hmm. you know, just, they just need more of something. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Good. Love it. So, so from, and this is the part that I think is, is super cool to me because obviously I'm into, you know, brands and building a brand and business and fitness industry and all that good stuff. How were you able to really start from scratch? Because at the end of the day, yeah, phase one had a name here in Vegas. And this is what, the ninth island or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I get mm -hmm. that there is some connection. Right. But in reality, there was no phase one in Vegas. Right. I mean, in, in Hawaii, there was yeah. nothing really, you know, you had to start from nothing. So, like, what was that process like? It, I mean, it, it was hard. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I mean, but in my mind. I knew it was something the community needed. Yeah. And one of the, you asked me this earlier, which I didn't really answer was why phase one. Mm -hmm. It was because you were doing it the way yeah. I would want to do it. Yeah. Um, you as a person, especially is the reason why, like we connected right off yeah. the back and we're just the same person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, that was huge for me because there's a lot of times where you partner with people and it just, it doesn't yeah, work out. Doesn't you know how that goes. Yep. So, you know, um, just just through that process, um, phase one was the brand that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And here's here's the biggest thing. In Hawaii, it's a different beast. Yeah. So I didn't want it to be about me, Paul's mm. training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I wanted to connect it to something mm -hmm. where they could go do their Google research. Yeah. And even though it's not in Hawaii, they never heard of yeah. it, it'll link back to the phase one brand mm. and they'll see who's training here and whatnot, yeah. see the gym, and, and that you know, that's sense. what I wanted. Yeah, yeah that's big. That's yeah. big. Yeah, and, and that's, I mean, I, I, I love that you said that because that's the focus point. You know what I mean? We always look at, you know, a lot of trainers look at what they do and it's like, like you said, Mike Waters sports training, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Which is mm -hmm. cool. It's all about you. I get it. But at the end of the day, from day one, I've always wanted to create more of a brand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? More something that when I'm old and you know, I'm hanging out in Hawaii on the island, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, it's still going. It's still something that athletes are still benefiting from so i love that mindset of like i, I want to be a part of something that's more of a brand mm -hmm. more you know yeah i started it and all that good stuff but now like you said when people google and type it in they see the athletes they mm -hmm. see the names they see that stuff before they see me which is yeah, dope right and because that was the original game plan mm -hmm. so so what are some of the things because obviously there's a lot of um fitness professionals that are going to catch this video right uh, and, and, and just before we go any deeper into it, I do want to let everyone know that this episode is uh, brought to you by our new course that's coming out very soon, which is uh, building a fitness brand. So that's why I thought the timing on this was so perfect because that course will be dropping very soon. And Paul has lived that. Him mm, and I have worked literally. closely and, you know, we're on the phone. We're, you know, doing what we need to do in order to build. And now it's to the point where he's got it. You know what I mean? We, I check in from time to time, um, but he's got it, you know, so I just want to kind of drop that. So what was the what were the challenges to building the brand mm -hmm. and getting parents and athletes to say, you know what? I need to go train with these guys. Absolutely. So, I mean, number one, it was it was back to the my question is, why mm -hmm. do you need a trainer at the age of nine? Yeah. So yeah. it was going back to that question yeah. in Hawaii because we're kind of behind at times. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, you know, uncles are like, you know, or, or coaches are like, mm -hmm. why you got to go there and pay when I can do it for yeah, you at yeah. home? Yeah, we can do it in So the that, that was one of the biggest challenges to start. Yeah. Number two, you know, people will, will look at it at any which way they want to. So mm -hmm. what, what I'm saying is, phase, yeah, phase one is legit in Vegas. Yeah. And I told you this before. Nah, Hawaii is just a knockoff one. Literally, oh, we had wow. we had we had one person that I know of that actually said that. That would be the actual response. Like people that was his actual response. It? Yeah, it, it was wow. a coach. It was a high school coach that actually brought his team to Phase One here, and I won't wow. I won't say it right now. You know who I'm talking about, but <laughs> they actually brought their kids here, but they actually told them we were the knockoff of here. Oh, so wow. I mean, there was a lot of yeah. challenges, but. That's why staying connected with you yeah. and just just in my mind, I knew it was something that the community yeah. needed. At the end yeah. of the day, it was bigger than me. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. No, that's huge, man. But yeah, you're always gonna have those people. You're always yeah. gonna have the haters out there, mm -hmm. you know. And 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 that's the thing. I mean, people don't realize that a brand is not just a building. Right. You know what I mean? A brand is not just you know, hey, we got the cool black turf. That's not the brand. The brand is 
the productivity, the results, mm -hmm. the culture, the people that are in and out. I mean, we have clients that have been training with us for years. That's the part of the brand. So, mm -hmm. so that's dope. You had to kind of fight through that. So what, what was the transition? Uh, Cause I know your story is, is similar to even mine and how I started phase one, right. but how did you start phase one Hawaii? You know, Right now, you, you guys are at a dope facility, which we'll talk about, but it didn't start there. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. What was that process like? How did it start? Well, I think the, the best thing about this is I literally, this is why, you know, this course I think is pretty cool that, yeah. that you're doing because when, when Mike said I lived it, I literally lived it going through the process yeah. with Mike. So the fact that he said he started at Parks, yep. I said, I'm going to start at Parks. <laughs> you know, I just went step, everything he yeah. said, I did. Yeah, that's right. True. Yeah. So we started at the park. We had maybe 12, 15 kids. Mm -hmm. Half of those were my my own kids or my family <laughs> members, you know, and uh, people like what they saw on social yeah. media. I mean, rather if it was phase one, Paul, or whatever the yeah. case was, mm -hmm. it kind of caught people's attention. Yeah. Um, from that point, we ended up at the Boys and Girls Club from where, mm. where the city I'm from. Yeah, I remember And uh, we did a free training at the park. And you're like, that's a great idea. Yeah. I swear that maybe not was a great idea because yeah. we had about 100 <laughs> kids show up. Was um, but, but the cool part is we kept at least, you know, 25% of those kids. Yeah, paying. nice. Um, the Boys and Girls Club kept us there for a year. We donated yeah. some money to the club. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah. They didn't charge us. Then we got kind of popular and now people were like, I can't drive all the way there. Yeah. We come more central to the island. Mm. We can make yeah. that happen. And, yeah. you know, it, it's just the plan, you know, mm. from above. And, you know, it's I walk into a building and at Z3 yeah. and the guy yeah. goes, Paul, somebody said I needed to talk to you. Oh, and wow. it was a dope indoor gym. Yeah. And we ended up there for a year. Um, mm. They had a they had a bounce for whatever reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we ended up at another dope spot. So he, were, he was the pivotal point, though. I told Mike, you know, I, I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> yeah. You so know, I mean, I, I, I might have to move out there to Vegas, Mike, yeah. and, uh, you know, work with you because yeah. I don't know where this is going. Yeah. I'm just tired of, like, renting from people and then or, or um, you know, subleasing from yeah. people and then they end up having to leave themselves. Yeah, yeah. And you were like, I went through that, blah, blah, blah. So the yeah. cool part is every step of the way you mm -hmm. went through it. Yeah. So you were able to coach me through it. Yeah. And I was able to, okay, see the light at the end of the yeah, tunnel. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And then, um, you know, you were like, I know this one trainer, very popular. He does NFL trainers. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're in Hawaii. You're not in Nevada where we need an indoor gym. Mm -hmm. How about we think out of the box? Yep. Look for yep. an outdoor. I remember that. Love because it. the rent. I was jealous at the end of the day. <laughs> the rent was just too, is too ridiculous in yeah. Hawaii. And it, it's just probably three times the square footage in, in here yeah. in Nevada. Mm -hmm. So. You know, you're like, let's think out the box and yeah. look outdoor. I'm like, hmm, I actually know of maybe a place. Yeah. We found this dope spot, fifth half, you know, half a football field. Mm -hmm. We had no electricity. We had to figure out how to build a weight room, yeah. um, adjust into it because there's no building. Yeah. Right. So I mean, that's it, it was just the process, and you know, we're the good part is we're building. Yeah. clientele through mm -hmm. all of this through all of it and exactly. i always say it's like the koi fish like you put a koi fish in a bigger pond mm -hmm. it just grows bigger yeah and growing. that's literally what happened to us yeah. in hawaii no that's dope yeah and, and that that's to me that's the key part to that trend to those transitions through all the ups and downs and the sub leases and moving locations you are still focused on one thing mm -hmm. is producing results that's it and yep. keeping athletes in there yep and granted, when athletes are getting results and parents are happy with what you're doing and they know it's quality, they'll follow you wherever. Yes. And absolutely. I know you experienced it just like yeah. I have. Mm -hmm. When I got to, you know, have that meeting like, hey, we're moving at the end of the month. We're going to be over here. They all go, ah, all right, well, let me look it up. All right, see you Monday. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got the right brand and you're really giving away quality, a quality product, mm -hmm. you usually don't have to worry about it. Of course, you'll lose some people in the transition because of proximity or it might be a little too far from school or so you'll lose some but for the most part most people are going to travel with you mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yep. uh you kind of ended at the previous location right outdoor mm -hmm. about 50 yard football field um talk a little bit about how because I, I love that space right you know what i mean yeah. that space um you guys probably seen the videos. If you haven't, make sure you guys tap into our Phase One Hawaii IG page. You can see that. But dope outdoor field, literally created the lights. I mean, mm -hmm. just created like a stadium field. Mm -hmm. And then what was super dope? You had the idea of the containers, mm -hmm. 
and turning those into basically the weight room. How did that right. idea come about? Because to me, I thought that was super, yeah. that was the dopest part. Right. So prior to that, we literally had to haul whatever weights we needed, you know, from 100 yards away over yeah. to that. Then I was like, Mike, I need at least storage. Yeah. We need to get a container, at least a 20 footer, yep. at least right next to the field. <laughs> so I don't have to go 100 yards going back and forth. Yeah. So we got that. And then one of my, my female uh, adult clientele trainers mm-hmm. were like, hey, Paul. I found this pretty dope container gyms and mm-hmm. I, and I looked at it mm-hmm. and I was like, I got obsessed with it. Yeah. Yeah. And That's then I would, dope. and then I had another, you know, I had another client who brought his son, Stan. Yeah. And yep. Stan mm-hmm. was like, he, he was in the construction field. Yep. He said, Paul, I'm going to build you a weight room. Wow. And he had this idea and he came with a, so much wood that I thought wow. he was building a house. <laughs> and uh, he actually had the idea where it wasn't an actual container gym, mm. but he built a patio over two yeah. of them, which he made it look super dope. And wow. then we use the containers as storage. Wow, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Hey, I'm telling you, that was so dope to me. I love when I would come out there, man. It, it was really that kind of like dungeon vibe, mm-hmm. but outdoor. outdoor. And then of course you're in Hawaii, so the weather's not, I mean, it was just perfect. So right. I thought that was super, super awesome. Mm-hmm. So now that you are, how many years in? Six years. You know, I don't age, yeah. so I don't really about even think years. about it. <laughs> so six years yeah, in. Yeah, six years. Okay, in. got it. So what what kind of um, results have you produced in the last six years? Mm-hmm. You know, as far as the athletes and 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 you know how how have you seen Phase One Hawaii impact the community? You know where you're at. Yeah, I mean it, it's cool because even from inception, like from mm-hmm. the time we started, even we started, it's kind of flipped the script because mm-hmm. here. You got an elite pros, yeah. um, more say, and then we had just kids, yeah, yeah. you know, but even at that level till now, you know, even just going through a ladder, mm-hmm. um, doing drills, yeah. uh, kids go back to their practices mm-hmm. and other parents are like, where'd they learn how to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and on the field, I mean, these kids are just, they're different. Yeah. They look different. They move different. I mean, mm-hmm. you can tell they get training. There's just not, it's not a natural thing. Yeah. Um, throughout the years, we started, you know, creating momentum and we got mm-hmm. some some um, high-end college kids yeah. coming through. Mm-hmm. Um, we have recently had one uh, receiver, top receiver from Hawaii that went to UCF. Nice. Um, he trained with us, a lineman, Lokahi. He, he, he plays tackle over there, guard mm-hmm. at UCF. We got a whole handful of elite soccer girls that we trained nice. from high school, and they all mm-hmm. transitioned to big schools like nice. USC, Colorado, mm-hmm. and all these other places. So. Um, but it's, it's just the community environment yeah. in general. I mean, the results are going to come. And, you know, that's another part of the mentorship where, yes, I was a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. You know, I did play sports, but I learned how to personal train. Yeah. But I knew nothing about performance, about sports performance. performance. Training. Yeah. So, I mean, the mentorship coming from you and why we do things the way we do mm-hmm. was huge. Yeah. And, you know, we're getting kids 40 times cut down major. Yeah. You know, we're getting their bench presses up or, you know, whatever the case is, mm-hmm. it's the results. I always say numbers don't lie. People yeah. do. Yep. So people can say, oh, now that place is garbage yep. or that place, you know, whatever. They don't like that. But look at the I go look at the numbers. Yep. Men, That's all I got to say. Men lie, women lie, yeah, numbers don't. Exactly. <laughs> so it. the part that we produce numbers and results, mm-hmm. I mean, That's nobody dope. can say anything at the end of the day. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So so with that, I know there's going to be some... some uh, young you know and i say young meaning time Mm -hmm. uh fitness professionals that have the goal of expanding taking their brand to the next level you know if they don't already own a facility or a gym they eventually want to own their own so what i what i want to know is what was your experience like going from you basically being the trainer the owner, mm-hmm. the everything, mm-hmm. to where now you have a team. You know, right. now you have Jason and some of those yep. guys out there yep. that are really helping take it to the next level. So, one, how did you like identify and like find people like that? And was that process easy, or was it something where you went through a lot of people mm-hmm. to get the core that you currently have? Right, right. No, that's a great question. So, you know, I, I always believe in the timing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And Ironically, when we, I try not to look for trainers. Yeah. Um, just because I was very protective because I did everything. Mm-hmm. And people were like, well, if yeah. it's not Paul, I'm not doing it. Yeah. yeah. So I had to make sure like it was the right people that I could train up to yeah. make sure they're at least getting the similar, at least results. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So 
I've had some people where we put on an ad and we get some people come through and it was a force thing, I feel, where, yeah. you know, yeah, I got this trainer, we're yeah. building a team, but... Yeah, you were just hiring like yeah, a regular and, job. Then, just... I mean, you and I know we had many conversations mm, and it just yeah. wasn't the right fit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the right people came in without even looking. Yeah. And, sure. you know, let's say Jason, for example, he used to work out at, 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 a, at a commercial gym. Mm. And then he wanted to be a trainer there, but he was like, this ain't really my, my gig. Yeah, I want to work yeah. with athletes. Yep. And he was from Virginia moving to Hawaii. Mm. He was only there for about a year. Some other trainer that wow. works there said, no, you need to go see Paul at phase one. Oh, that's awesome. Because I think that's more your deal. Really? Yeah. So it oh, was wow. like. Wow, that's how that started. 25 Damn. years old, you know, I mean, he was 24, now 25. Damn, with a lot cool. of energy that should be in the NFL. Yeah, you know, he's really. an all-American running back. And then recently... I saw a girl training. I saw her videos on IG, mm -hmm. track runner at the University of Hawaii for, for all her years. She just graduated. Yeah. And I just liked what she was doing. It's what yeah. we do. And she had like perfect form. Yeah. So I just reached out. I said, were you ever interested in becoming a yeah, trainer? She yeah. said, actually, I was going to take the test. Really? That's I didn't know dope. what direction. She was going to go yeah. buy some yeah. Instagram um, promotion Promo to learn how to to learn how to market before she even became a trainer oh, wow. so wow. i was like nah you don't need that yeah because yeah. we already been through it yeah, you just joined it. the team and yeah. basically with phase one we're going 100 miles an hour yeah. all you have to do is jump on board literally. and we're going 100 miles together literally just plug in other than that you're going to stand still yep. and watch plug us in. keep going at 100 miles an hour i love it i love it i love it <laughs> yeah and, and that's key man and, and and so i think you know one of the big lessons in that is like you said when you were trying to like force it it wasn't the right people right because this is an industry of like passion mm -hmm. people exactly. that really care this isn't an industry where young trainers come in and go i'm gonna make millions of dollars right it's not that type of situation yeah it's something where you invest time energy passion and you serve a purpose and then ultimately you elevate to those higher levels exactly. so i love that man i think the team out there is dope i'm mm -hmm. excited about getting out there and, and uh checking them out so i, I think the, the one thing too i want to add yeah. to that is like I watch how you operate and how mm -hmm. you work. Yeah. I work the same way, meaning we lead by example. Yeah. And to. meaning like we're going to go move machines around. We're going to move the gym around yeah. without people. Yeah. We're going to do our workouts. We're going to demonstrate the workouts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Jason even told me, he goes, bro, you must be the hardest working man I know. <laughs> like dope. you literally start at five in the morning. Yeah. You don't go home till after 9 p.m. Literally. So it's like when you lead by that kind of example, mm -hmm. they can't help just to have that. If they already have that in them. Yeah. They can't help to try yeah. to emulate that. Yeah, it'll bring it out. Yeah, so 100%. I mean, you can't be like, I just want to be Instagram famous yeah. and do some cool drills or yeah. some cool weightlifting stuff and, and expect to attract people that way. You mm -hmm. might get a couple of people, but yeah. it, it won't last. Yeah, it won't last. Yeah, they'll exactly. come in for a few sessions and that's pretty yeah. much it. No, that's that's dope. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, and that's I agree 100%, man. In this industry, you got to lead from the front. Mm -hmm. Your team has to know, like, He's in the trenches yeah, with us. Exactly. This isn't like I'm the owner of phase one and mm -hmm. you walk around and your hands never get dirty. Right. No, just a couple of days ago, we, Paul and I rearranged this whole gym mm -hmm. that we're sitting in. Right. You know, just on what? I think it was Saturday night. Saturday night. It was like Saturday night, 10 p.m. In we're Las here, Vegas. In Las people. Vegas, Saturday night, 10 p.m. <laughs> right. And we're moving equipment. But I mean, that's a mindset. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it wasn't even a plan. We didn't map it out. We had some ideas, and in that moment, we said, "Hey, let's let's do it no, now." Mike Mike got out his measure, his tape measure, literally, and I saw him thinking hard. <laughs> yeah. So I said, "Mike, I think you want to move some stuff. <laughs> I'm going to use the restroom real quick. Let's do it. And let's just get it done." Yeah. And, and we got it done, right. and, and it's flowing real nice. So mm -hmm. so that's the mindset, man, that that we love. So so now let's transition to where you're at today, because we just <clears throat> recently. Signed a new contract, mm -hmm. new location, man. Right? Tell us a little bit about that and, and why it's super exciting. Yeah, it's super exciting because actually pre-COVID, you know, in 2019, you know, my uh, Vegas location has the Phase 1 Academy. Mm -hmm. yep. And we were trying to start the Phase 1 Academy back then. Um, so we found, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult because of the just the way school is there. And it's yeah. not like here where it wasn't as easy just to get a homeschool program yeah. in jump right in especially the fact that we didn't have an actual building or electricity yeah so <laughs> or electricity or electricity <laughs> so or like a bathroom. A third, third world country <laughs> yeah like, for real no electricity no bathroom so, so. <laughs> we we you know long story short we plugged into a, a private school yeah and they're like i think this is an amazing idea wow. so we actually got into the school COVID happened and then it ended mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. now re fast forward you know when things started opening up again yeah. 
the founders of the school reached out to me again and said, hey, I think we're at a better place in time. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Let's talk about it again. Mm. And let's see if we can make this work. And yeah, I said, well, awesome. you know, the only way we did, the reason why we didn't make it work really the first time yeah. is because we didn't have a field. Mm. Like not even a 30-yard field, yeah, not yeah, even yeah. a 20-yard yeah. field. We had no field. So I said, that's the mm. only way we we're able to make this work yeah. as a partnership. Yeah. He said, well, I got three acres worth of turf. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> three acres three worth acres of, of turf. turf. And he yeah. said, uh, you know, they were like, we'll set up the weight room how you want it. Still yeah. outdoors. Wow. It looks pretty cool with the tents. Yeah. I mean, we have yeah. a hundred yard strip of turf already set where we can do oh, training. Wow. That's um, huge. We have huge. multiple training areas with turf. Basically, we have one, two, three, four, five areas of turf. Five areas yeah, of so, turf? Yeah, because we have a hundred <laughs> yard straightaway that's about 10 <laughs> yards wide. And then there's a box on each end where you can actually do a different type of training. That's adjacent to the weight room on the pool deck. Yeah. And we have a hunt. You uh, hear that? Light, light flex on the pool deck. Pool deck. Yeah, there's a pool. Pool deck. Go ahead. And an and a <laughs> Olympic pool. Olympic. And it's, and it's Not on, just a pool, but yeah. Olympic pool. So just. we literally, we set up the weight room where we're looking at the pool. Damn. Um, and then, you know, we have a, another private area for a training, for private sessions. Wow. Um, and then the kicker is we're, we're in the process of um, building out a hundred yard football soccer field. An actual field. An actual field man yeah. you see that and you see the the story think about where that started think about that like you said it started in the park. parks mm-hmm. what six years ago yeah six and, years and ago. look how cool it is so so i started phase one 18 years ago but look at the difference of what it took me or how long it took and then once i had the experience and i was able to share that with somebody that had the same vision mm-hmm. and what he's been able to accomplish in Six years, six years compared to what it took us 18 years and so now imagine the next chapter exactly Th- three years yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. so I, I love it man that's awesome yeah. so so i'm moving to hawaii so this is the first <laughs> announcement no. <laughs> but no i love it man so no i think this is perfect so what is next you know what's the next chapter for phase one hawaii what's the next chapter for you personally mm-hmm. and your team See, the, the cool part is, like, I, I, I still always lead by example. Mm-hmm. I am older now. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I got to slow. Like, I just was doing, uh, I had to do a whole week of speed agility training. Yeah. And I was doing drills and demonstrating. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling <laughs> vibrant. Boom, I strained my ha- my uh, my calf. Yeah. So, you know, I'm learning <laughs> that I can't do everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my plan now is, now I'm able to kind of step back. And I want to be able to manage my trainers. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, and then I pick and choose the training I would yeah, really awesome. would like to do. Yep. And, um, you know, and from that point that when we get that full football soccer yeah. field, I mean, sky's the limit. Now yeah. we're no longer just a training facility. Mm-hmm. We That's are amazing. just your it's it's a what do we say a private uh, sports complex. Yeah, it's a complex. Now. So we yeah. can do our own pylon tournaments. Yeah, we can do our own flag tournaments. We can do our wow. own soccer tournaments. I mean, it just opens it up to so much yeah, more. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Jeez. Now, you know, we're, we're talking about putting in a basketball court. Mm. Um, of course, everything's outdoor. Yeah. But you know what the crazy thing about that I yeah. got to put in because of COVID? Yeah. Right? Um, you know, everybody pre-COVID was like, hey, yeah. you need an indoor gym like phase one yeah. in Vegas. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. they come here and visit like that gym is so cool. <laughs> you got to get it like that. I go, don't really ask for what you don't want. That means yeah, a higher true. tuition fee. Higher fees. Right. Yep. Because that's expensive. Yep. Um, but yeah, when this all went down, I said, no, nah, yeah. I'm cool outdoors. Yeah. We're good this yeah. way. And, you know, throughout this whole process where Hawaii had strict mandates shutting down yeah. gyms, gyms were literally closed for a year. Yeah. And they the small little box gyms were just closing up shop because yeah. they couldn't afford it. Yeah. yeah. And where we were still operating still because running, we're outdoor. Our, our government said gyms can be open, but it has to be 100% outdoors. Oh. And see, <laughs> they didn't know we existed, yeah. I think. They, they like, yeah. yeah, they so thought they all, looked around like, oh, no one has it. So yeah. We'll so all good. the commercial gyms were flying around trying yeah. to figure out how do we how do push we things outdoor, outdoor. But we already had it. We looked like yeah. Muscle Beach in California Perfect. a long time ago. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's dope. No, that's dope. And and at the end of the day, I tell people all the time, man, if it wasn't 117 degrees mm-hmm. <laughs> during the summer, right. we probably wouldn't even need all this. Right. I love training outdoor. I mm-hmm. love being out on the football fields and stuff like that. But in Vegas, it's just five, right. six months a year that you just cannot do it. Right. So, so no, that's dope, man. I love it. So 
you're in Vegas right now hanging out. I'll be in Hawaii next month. Well, well December, December, we said in yep. December. So I think that's going to be really exciting just to kind of come hang out and see the new facility, the new tour. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess from here, with football season kind of in the works right now, mm -hmm. I know Hawaii's kind of on some weird stuff with mm -hmm. football and all that right, stuff. Right. So in 2022, what can we expect from Phase 1 Hawaii? What events or what, what's kind of – What's the big stuff on the calendar for 2022? Well, we already have, uh, and I'm not going to say the name of the organization, but we already have big organizations from out here in the States yeah. wanting to host their big football seven-on-seven -seven nice. tournaments. Um, nice. Again, the soccer tournaments that we can hold. We're actually yeah. now starting more of our youth football programs, mm -hmm. you know, our, our 6U, 8U flag, 10U, yeah. 12U, seven-on-seven for yeah, travel. We want to get that going all the way, all the way to high school, and then we're gonna start our first tackle mm. football youth tackle. Um, you know, now that we've got this all going, yeah. we got the space. The cool part about it is it's a one-stop shop. Yeah, you're home. Literally. You're at our location, and you don't have to go anywhere. Wow, but dope. here's what we really want to do: is want to beef up our our Phase One Academy mm. within the school. So yeah. we currently yeah. we have nine students, um, mostly middle school. Okay. But we really want to, because now, if you think about it, soccer, you know, programs mm -hmm. or clubs, yeah. um, we, now that we have all this going, our football program, our youth football program is more like a club soccer. Yeah. And that's the environment we're creating. Yeah, that's true. And I always say that, you know, of course we're competitive. We want to win. That's just yeah. in our nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the but phase one way. The, the way <laughs> we do it is we want to create an experience, yeah. an environment that kids want to come to and learn mm. not where you know they're getting yelled at so much yeah, and yeah. you know how it is in today's game yep. so you know we're, we're excited for that i mean just so many things we can do we, we actually have an event center there mm. as well on pro property That's where crazy. it's a big stage where they can do concerts outdoor um <laughs> we might do bodybuilding shows i mean yeah. you never know yeah i mean we, we got the space that's the cool mm. part um we can hold three on three basketball tournaments yeah I mean, just sky's the limit, like Literally, you said before. Man, that's yeah. awesome. No, yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm super excited about it. So before we wrap this thing up, the last thing I need from you, this is going to be seen by a lot of people that are now look at Phase 1 Hawaii the same way they look at Phase 1 Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and they say, I want that. Mm -hmm. I need that. That's my goal, whether it's in – you know, fitness competition, whether it's athlete performance, whether it's weight loss, whatever the goal may be for that person. So what advice would you leave someone that may be in those early stages, just getting their certification, you know, just committing to the concept of, I wanna be not only a trainer, but eventually I wanna grow a right. brand and a business and bring in other people to, to take it to the next level. What would be some key things that you would give that person? Yeah, so I, I think for the new trainers, uh, certification first. You know, I, I remember you'd always tell me, get that cert. Yeah. You know, that cert is important. Yeah. And But you can't think of it as important where I got it, I'm going to be the best trainer in the world. Yeah. But it's kind of like going in the doctor's office and you look at the certificate on the wall, you think, okay, legit doctor. Yeah. But, um, you know, so it's like, don't get full of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, just make sure you are constantly a learner of the game yeah and, and i think that's the thing is i'm constantly learning no matter what mm. um i learned from you reg many other trainers that i reach out to just to just to hear what they yeah. have to say about things whether yeah. if i agree or not it's just a constant learning mm -hmm. because if you look at athletes they evolve yeah. over the years yeah, so true. we as trainers have to evolve with them and i'm not saying with the fancy stuff you know, I'm, I'm talking about just evolving, just knowing, yeah. you know, the, the good stuff to the do. Quality. Some quality right. basic usually is what it is. Yeah. Um, after that, man, it, it's just, you know, the phase one brand is embrace the process. Mm -hmm. yep. It's basically you're going to go through the ups, the downs. It's just being consistent and persistent at the end of the day. And, and that's it. It's yeah. consistency and persistency. That's what I did. Yeah. No matter, I mean, it was a point where Mike, I don't think this is going to work. I don't think the income is going to help pay for it, mm -hmm. my bills and whatever. But we made it work being consistent. Yeah. And when you have that passion, 
you know you're in the right place. 100%. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right, man. How can people find you, man? People that want to tap in. Yes, sir. Give us some IG handles. Give us something. <laughs> well, my personal IG is I am Paul Alferez. Um, of course, at Phase One Hawaii is, is Phase One Hawaii. Um, you can tap into our YouTube page as well, Phase One Hawaii. And we're trying to build that brand, you know, just along with Mike mm -hmm. uh, on Phase One Sports. So, you know, it's it's one team, one dream. There you go. I love it, man. Love it. Love it. So once again, this one is brought to you by the Building a Fitness Brand Course. So all my young fitness professionals, and I, I keep saying young, maybe because I've been doing this for almost 20 years. <laughs> so everybody feels seems young. But anyone that's just looking to take it to the next level, looking to build a brand, uh, maybe you're already active, maybe you already have multiple facilities, but you just want to build a stronger brand, a stronger presence uh, in your community and, and around your location, uh, better, stronger community you know, of your clients. So whatever that may be, it's all going to be included in the fitness brand course that will be available early November. So if you're watching this after November, it's already available. So check out the website. Uh, the link I'm sure will be in the description. So check that out. And I would like to thank Paul, man, for hanging out with me tonight and just, you know, just sharing the information. You know, I'm really proud of, of, of what you've done out in Hawaii and, and, and how you've not only taken the brand, but made it something that we could be even more proud of. You yes, know what I mean? Like I, I never worry about the brand going a different direction. I never worry about it, you know, where I have to call and go, hey, man, why'd you do that? Because it's the same like mine. You know what I mean? We're on the same page. We're here to serve a purpose. So I just want to let you know, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate you yes, too. Sir. Yes, that. sir. All right, we're going to keep it going. Well, thank y'all for watching. Embrace the process because that's the secret to it all. Embrace the process. We'll see you on the next one.